drop shadows on text. I love it. I think it helps to separate the text from the background. Really easy to do on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. So let me show you. So here's my project. First things first, I need to add some text. So I'm going to open up the effects library and then I'm going to come down to titles and I'm going to start off just using a standard text effect. So I'm going to drop that on my timeline, lengthen it out like so. We're just going to go into the inspector, video, title, we can put something in here. Let's just go with Mr. Alex Tech. And I'm going to leave it white. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So it doesn't really pop from the background. So we want to add a drop shadow. All we do from this list, scroll down until you get to here. You've got drop shadow. Just click on the word drop shadow if you don't see the options underneath. And then all you need to do on the X or the Y axis, just drag across to add a little bit of a drop shadow. You can move it around by using the X and Y axis to get it in exactly the right point. Double click on the word offset or use this little swirly logo on the right to reset it. Underneath there, you've got the amount of blur and then you've got the opacity. Just above that, there is the color as well. So if you don't want it to be a traditional black shadow, you can change the color of it to do whatever you want with it. Now, all of this can also be animated so you can keyframe this, which I'm gonna come back to shortly. Let me just remove that. Now, what if you've used a text plus effect instead? Text plus is basically the same, but it's fusion based. So it does give you a few more options. Do the same thing. I've dropped my text plus on here. In the inspector, video, title, I've got this little new toolbar at the top. I've got text. Let's put Mr. Alex Tech in here once again. or will make it a little bit bigger. This time, what you need to do is jump over to this shading tab right here. And then within here, there's a bunch of different shading elements. Use this select element dropdown to go to number three. And you can see here, it says the name is a black shadow. So just tick enabled and that will enable the drop shadow on the text plus. Scroll down a little bit, there's all these properties so we can change the opacity and we can change the color. Another cool thing, not sure how useful it is, but in this type area, there's a drop down. You can change it to gradient and then you can have yourself a funky little gradient drop shadow instead. So again, have a play with all the options in here. Lastly, what happens if you've got a PNG, an image? So this is a Mr. Alex Tech image. I've created it elsewhere. It's a PNG, so it's got a transparent background, but I want to add a drop shadow onto this text instead. Let me just resize it, make it a little bit smaller. Now for this one, all we need to do is hop into the effects library, come down and open open effects, scroll right down in this list until you get to this resolve FX stylized area. Third one down, there's a drop shadow. So just drop that onto your PNG file. And there we go. We now have a drop shadow on this text. Give that image a click on the timeline. So it's highlighted in red. Open up the inspector, top right hand corner and go to the effects tab at the top. And you can see you've got the properties for drop shadow. If you don't see the properties, just click on the word drop shadow so that they appear. We've got the strength, we've got the angle, we've got the distance and we've got the blur. Easy peasy, right? Now, remember I said that you could animate these drop shadows as well. Well, check this out. So in this little sequence, I've got the word light bulb and then the light bulb pops down, turns on and then swings around a bit. And what I want to do is to animate the drop shadow so that it moves in accordance with the actual light bulb. So how do you do it? Well, it's actually dead easy. First thing, I'm using a standard text title here. So it's not a text plus, it's not a PNG, although it works in pretty much the same way if you're doing either of those two. What I want to do, grab my playhead and put it to the point where the light bulb turns on. So I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. This is the frame where their light bulb actually comes on. So I'm just gonna go back one frame, just using the left arrow key, because this is the point where I want to start my animation. I'm gonna give the text a click in the inspector, video, title, same as before, scroll down, and it's this offset that I need to animate. So next to offset, you've got this little diamond. Give that a click. And that tells it that we're going to be animating this and it sets a keyframe. I'm then going to move my blackhead forward one frame to this point where I want my drop shadow to appear. And I'm going to move my Y axis just down like so. So now if we move back, there's no drop shadow. And as the light bulb comes on, bing, we have a nice little drop shadow. Now we're just going to keep moving our playhead along until the point where the light bulb starts moving, which is right there. We're just going to click to add another keyframe, but we're not actually going to change anything just yet. We're then going to keep moving our playhead to the point where it gets to the end and change its direction over there. And then we just need to change our X axis. 
So the light's over on the left, so my shadow needs to be over on the right. So we'll just drag this over. And we'll keep going with the playhead to the point where it stops over there, right about there. And at this point, the shadow needs to be back over to the left. So we're going to change our X over there like so. And if we play the whole thing from the beginning, no drop shadow, ping, turns on, moves across, moves back. Easy peasy, couple of keyframes, job done. So that's drop shadows in a nutshell. Easy, right? Turn off the light. See you next time.